Hello, Verma here again, and I'm back to discuss the improved phase of my 2021 MSGP Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan training project under the Pre-Management Development Program. To review, in my defined phase, I explained the background behind the Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan, or SOAP training, and how it stemmed from the Environmental Protection Agency ultimately moving down the chain to the 2021 Multi-Sector General Permit, or MSGP. Currently under the MSGP permit, only the city of Albuquerque had jurisdictional authority to enforce it. So therefore, we have to start in our own enforcement efforts here in our own backyard. The scope of my project is to include the training of all employees under the permit and to have those employees completely trained and on a yearly schedule within three years of the start of the project. Additionally, this project will have three goals, one for each year. In the first year, I'd like to have at least 60% of my targeted employees training online. After the second year, 80%. And the third year, to have all 100% employees completing their scope training online. This project will not include the training of temporary employees. Under the measure phase, I reviewed the SWIP training as it had been done in the past. The as-is map signified the various ways which training was performed both pre and post COVID. Since COVID directly impacted our training practices, I included both aspects of training. From the as-is map, I initially created a survey that asked how many employees from each series reported to work. And out of each of those who reported to work, how many received the SWIP training in the past? I charted the results of the survey to visually show how current processes only allowed for minimal SWIP training of all facility staff. I concluded my defined phase with a cost analysis, informing about fees that can be implemented from the EPA and the difference between costs to outsource this training, as opposed to keeping the training and internal process with the city. The difference was a significant $20,000, making the internal process an obvious choice to continue training online. The A, or analyze, phase of the strategy was implemented through a fishbone diagram and the 5 Y method of solving a problem. The fishbone diagram brought some insight into the issue. However, it was the five whys that really brought forth to the light the meat of the problem. Several whys were identified, but only a couple were chosen, mainly because they overlapped across the board and for the impact they could produce. One of those whys, is the training of all drivers, mainly those at solid waste and transit. These drivers were never trained in SWIP, and several reasons were provided from not being in their union contract to drivers working overtime already and therefore not enough time to train them. The second why was overall being understaffed. The significant shortage at each of the facilities plus the loss of staff from being sick or quarantined created a black hole where managers and supervisors were doing the work of laborers just so they can keep up with all the tasks required to be done at the sites. This did not leave much time for training. And if training was to be done, then it would create a public service issue for the facility and the department. In order to improve the 2021 SWIP training, my stormwater team and I sat down to brainstorm on what we know of to date. We ask these questions. How are the facilities responding to the training itself? Can we improve on the process or the training? I sat down with two of my team members from the stormwater team, and we utilized the six hat method of brainstorming. We each took two hats to portray and focused on the issues discovered in the analyze phase and the five whys. By utilizing the six hats, we were able to embody the various emotions and thought processes that each of our facilities may be experiencing and move past those to come up with some results. We started with the red hat, he who represents fire and warmth. He described how the SWIFT training is necessary, how they need to get it done because it is required. Red also stated while gesturing with hands in the form of strangulation, that it will eventually get done one way or another. They just don't know it yet. Yellow Hat, on the other hand, who is all daisies and sunshine, came on board and explained cheerily that if training is completed as planned, then when the EPA came to audit 
they'd be happy and not charge us, as a, us any fines. Additionally, Yellow explained it would just be better for the whole community because the city would be contributing to the, providing cleaner water for everyone and the drivers can also be lookouts for violations since they're out in the city all day every day and they can report what they know is a violation so can it be addressed sooner rather than later. Black Pat went on next. He represents the dangers and risks expressed with a scowl. Everyone is complaining how there's just not enough time to complete the training. Everyone says it's not in their job description other than their union, and everyone says they don't have the budget. Black also cautioned that management in various facilities do not believe it is necessary for the drivers, and since we did not report the required DMRs to the EPA, we're going to get audited and fined anyways. White Hat, who represents logic, he voiced that yes, we missed our DMRs, but we also know the regulations and have the knowledge of past administration orders and fines. One of those past administration orders was to transit who had to pay over $25,000 for the violation. White was sure that transit did not want to pay another fine. White concluded, we have to provide in-field technology for supervisors so they can get to the drivers out there who are out in the field trained and prevent time crunches in the office. Green Hat came on, who is energetic and thinks outside the box, articulated that the training should be shortened for the drivers to modify the existing training for the new hires and then provide some other easy form of training for the yearly requirement. Permit states that modification of training is allowed and there should be an onboarding process for both the transit and solid waste drivers beyond the new employee orientation. So therefore, modification of training should be easy. Finally, Blue Hat came on and he who sees the whole bird's eye view chimed in after listening to everyone's concerns and advice and concluded, that all new transit and solid waste drivers should be able to go ahead and attend a shortened version of the current training. Mostly the whole reason behind why SWIFT is done can be achieved through three videos that are included in the current training and spill response information. Those are the key points that will need to be focused on initially. Next, pamphlets will need to be created for the yearly SWIFT training requirement They'll be focusing on certain items that are pertinent to both sets of drivers. These pamphlets will have a signature page to allow for tracking of who has read the training for the year. And additionally, the other facilities will have options to modify the existing training in order to help alleviate some of the short staff and lack of time concerns. These modifications should cover many, if not all the issues the current training has experienced and allowed for a greater amount of staff to seamlessly complete the SWIFT training. To activate our solutions, we focused on each one as a separate task. One of the issues discovered was the lack of time the facilities have due to understaffing and quarantine COVID restrictions. Everyone on the stormwater team agreed that having the M and the E series employees taking full SWIFT training online upon hire and every year. B-Series employees will take full training upon hire and a modified online version, either individually or in a classroom setting, depending on the need and equipment availability. The facilities can either modify the training themselves by picking and choosing the modules from the teachable program that relate to their position, or there will be a modified shortened version created by the Stormwater team and the Employee Learning Center and that will cut out much of the regulatory definitions but keep the focus on what the staff should deal with every day on a day-to-day -day basis. This process will take a few more man hours from the stormwater team, but will not involve many other aspects besides what is already in place. All of the modifications can be easily created and or modified and will not involve any other personnel than those that are already involved. The second issue discovered in the analyze phase 
was that of the transit and solid waste drivers not being trained. Even though they were reporting to the permitted sites on a daily basis. Therefore, modified versions of the SWIFT training pamphlets for drivers were created. These will be used for yearly training as the initial SWIP training upon hire will still be online. These pamphlets can be utilized for both transit and solid waste drivers and will have a signature area where the employee will sign and return to the supervisor who will then in turn return it to the stormwater team. This way yearly driver training can be tracked and these pamphlets only took a few hours of time to design and can be dispersed digitally or in paper. Either way, it'll be up to the facilities to decide. If you recall the as-is map from the defined phase of my project, it showed the SWIFT training process as it stood in the department at the start of the project. This map proved to be inconsistent with the permit and allowed for the majority of the staff of the facilities to miss out on SWIFT training, therefore placing the city in violation of the MSGP permit. This project now has led to the creation of the could be map. In the could be map, it shows how online training will be modified to cater to specific employees, such as drivers at hire, taking online training and yearly pamphlet training. Additionally, it depicts how the M and the E series will continue with the full training since they are key in maintaining compliance on the facility. They will also need the full SWIP training on a yearly basis. While the B series will take or can take various versions of the training according to the time of valuable staff schedules and job descriptions. This version of SWIFT training should flow easier for each department because they will be able to modify the training according to their needs. And this will provide a clear pathway for the facilities to train all personnel on site, allowing for them to walk through the process and provide options for obstacles which may hinder from having all staff trained. This ends my improved toll gate. I'd like to thank you for listening again and I hope you can join me for the next toll gate, the control and final phase, which is coming soon.